Hi, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Today's episode, Spycraft 2.0. Folks, this is not a game for the faint of heart or the weak of arm, because this weighs in at a pretty hefty amount. This game is... I don't even want to call it a sequel or a remake. This is a complete rebuild from the ground up of Spycraft 1.0. In as much as the new Battlestar Galactica is a rebuild of the original Battlestar Galactica in that they kept a couple names, some basic concepts, and everything else is pretty darn new. The original Spycraft, as you can guess from the name, was an espionage role-playing game. Now, espionage role-playing has been around for a very long time, going back to things like Top Secret, Top Secret SI, and the James Bond role-playing game, although it's really always taken a backseat to most of the other more popular genres, fantasy, horror, supers, sci-fi, etc. Spycraft 2.0, interestingly enough, takes a completely new approach to it. It's, D it's a D20 game, but... It's really almost not recognizable as a D20 game if you're used to things like Dungeons & Dragons. This is a very different approach. It is a modern game, so most of the original classes that you're used to, obviously, gone. Races, gone. You're a human. Big shock there. There are classes like the Advocate, who uses their social skills and their social contacts. The Faceman, who is your average con man. Soldier the man or woman of arms, the point man who cross-trains into everything, scientist, scout, a wide variety of core classes to choose from here. Additionally, this is very comp... In my opinion, it's an extremely complicated game. If you like crunch, if you like definition, if you like a lot of maneuvering that you can do, in this. It's a really good game for you. You can design your background from the ground up. There are a huge variety of feats and feat trees to choose from. They have simplified the skill system down. Languages and fitting into other nationalities is now summarized into culture. It would take a very, very long time to go through this book in detail because there's a whole lot of this book to go through. Really, folks, there's a lot there. You're getting quite a bit for your money with this. Honestly, this is pretty much a standalone game as long as you don't mind the fact that it does not come with a predetermined setting. Things like that are coming out at a later time. World on Fire, 10,000 Bullets. These are supplements for this game that, have, that are, will, have come out or will be coming out later. One of the most interesting innovations with this is in Spycraft 1.0, they had the chase mechanic which is how you could really effectively and dramatically role-play a car chase, a foot chase, a boat, plane, anything where you're pursuing somebody else. They've really expanded that in this case to a variety of other sorts of, well, chases, if you will. There are things like seductions, where you use different maneuvers to interact with the person that you're trying to seduce. Now, they could be seduced for carnal reasons, seduced for information, make them like you better, and it's really almost a series of mini-games in and of themselves. So, you could use the, but I can't possibly do that maneuver, when the person trying to seduce you uses the, but wait, it will be fun maneuver. The, this is used for seductions, it's used for chases, it's used for hacking. In theory, you could really use this for almost any interaction, from combat to research to seduction and hacking like they've already done it. To me, it is a very neat innovation. It's a very interesting ploy. To be honest with you, it's a little too complicated for me. I prefer my games a bit more streamlined, a bit more easy for the player and the game master to understand. But like I said, if you're looking for something with some interaction, if you're looking for something that requires some work, some crunch, this is most definitely the game for you. It is easily available at almost any online vendor and most likely at your friendly local game store. Now, if you have any questions, comments, things you'd like to see us review, please feel free to contact us at knweagle at yahoo.com. For Game Geeks, I'm your host, Kurt Weagle. Good night and good gaming.